Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of all, and in this video we're going to have a look at how to rig this servo arm. We're going to do that in two ways. One way you can move the parts around individually, and probably the more exciting is using inverse kinematics, so you can move it around just using one point, allowing you to pose it quickly and easily. So Blender actually makes rigging relatively easy, as long as you know the tricks to it. But there are some complexities to this, and for this video we're actually going to ignore these servos and this tube. That is going to be in the second video, so if you're not subscribed, do subscribe and press that bell button so you know when the video is up. Or if you're interested in checking out the Patreon, as these fantastic people have, that video is already up on Patreon because we're a week ahead, so you get more awesome Blender videos and you get them ad-free. So there are a few tricks to rigging up things, especially mechanical objects, and we'll go through those as we talk through them but I'm gonna to have to jump around a little bit slightly at points just to make sure everything's clear and the first is that especially for mechanical components you want your points of your rigging to be exact otherwise certain things especially the inverse kinematics are not going to work very well for example if I was to press shift and a and start with bringing in that armature and I press single bone and that will bring it in here so you'll notice that it's not visible at the moment if I go into x-ray mode you can see it this actually isn't perfectly on the spot where we want it to be. We'd want this somewhere here. Otherwise, when we join this to the later part, somewhere up here, then this isn't gonna actually be directly vertical, which is gonna cause some problems when we come to constrain it. So I'm actually gonna undo that, and we're gonna have a look at how we can get our cursor in exactly the point we want it to be. What you want to do is you wanna make sure that you've got some things that are identical on both sides, if possible. For example, if I go into vertex mode, I can alt select and shift alt select this circle here and exactly the same one on the other side. And if I press shift and S, I can then put my cursor to those vertices and that will average out to the perfect center. Now I'm using machine tools, which is what gives me this cool pie menu to flip in and out of the different modes quickly. And that also gives me this shift S menu for the cursor and origin. If you don't have machine tools, you're gonna to have something that looks like this instead. So I'll just turn that off. So you'll get something that looks like this and bleh, it's a mess and horrible, but you can still do cursor selected just there. So it's no different. But machine tools is free, so I don't know why you wouldn't. So back into object mode, shift and A, and then we're gonna bring in our armature. And we've got a single bone as our starting point here. Now, this would get very, very annoying if we have to keep clicking in and out of this in X-ray mode. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it is a little bit tedious. So the first tip that we want to do is if we come onto our right-hand side here, we can go down to our object data properties for our armature. It's like this little stick man. And if we click in front, we can now constantly have the bones in front so we can see them really nice and easily, which is very worth doing for this process. So what we want to do is we want to have each of these joints, each of the balls, if I go into edit mode, so you've got the one there and one there, we want to have those on the pivot points of our mechanical object. So my next pivot point is going to be this cylinder here, which allows it to rotate side to side in this direction. Otherwise, we're stuck only being able to move around on one plane. So same trick here. We need some points where we're going to align to. And if I just alt select there and then alt select exactly the same on the other side, I can do the same thing. Shift S to vert. And then we've got that there. So then I come into my bone, tab into edit mode, select on the top bit. Don't just have it generally selected. You need to select the top part, this ball, and then shift and S and then you need to move that to the cursor. So we've now got that centered. And then we're gonna do the same thing for our next bone. So all we need to do now is still in edit mode, click E to extrude, and we're gonna move that up. Now for this one, I've actually thought about this in advance and got my origin to actually the center of this face and this face. So I actually don't need to fiddle around with this as much. So Alt and S, I'm gonna move the cursor to the selected, which is at the origin, and then I can come into here, edit mode there, Alt and S, and then to cursor again. And we've got that perfectly set up. So I'm just gonna continue running through here and making sure that each of these bones is set up to each of the major pivot points. And for the last one where we've got this sort of mouth or jaw for our servo arm, I'm just gonna extrude that out and make sure that's perfectly horizontal. And you'll notice that when I sculpted this, I actually made sure that the arm goes vertical and then horizontally across from pivot point to pivot point, pretty much, which just makes life a lot quicker and easier. 
The next thing we need to do is join each of our points to our bones. So we've got each section, and I'd already got this sorted out, which I'd suggest you do before you do the rigging process. So you've got our bottom section here, middle there, and then next one there, next one, and then our jaw. Now you'll notice I've kept this jaw separately, but I have parented that to this upper jaw, which allows me to move it by itself, but for the rigging, it will just stay in relation to this. Now. At this point, I'd really suggest that you name your bone. So what we're going to do is tab into edit mode and then we can click on each bone and press F2 and we can name these. So I'm going to call these bone one, bone two, and so on. And the final thing that's worth mentioning is that these bones do have a definitive shape to them. You'll notice that we've got this octahedral and you've got the wider section and then a thinner section that's here. And this wider section, this bit here, needs to be towards the, I'm going to use the phrase, body of whatever you're rigging, and then the smaller section needs to go towards the tip of your extremity. So if you think that this is being an arm, like a human arm, this here, or the minor point, would be flowing towards the hand. If you don't do that, when you rig this up, it's going to move in a very odd fashion, and it's not going to correctly move the points that come later down the line. And you'll see what I mean when we start moving this around. So to parent everything to the bones is relatively simple. You click the object that you want to pair, so this bottom section. You then shift click on the armature, then press Control and Tab to go into pose mode. You'll notice in the top left hand corner it now says pose mode. And then you shift select on the bone specifically that's part of the armature, which for me then goes blue, that you want to parent this to. Press Control P for parent, and then you click bone because we're parenting it to a bone. And then you can just go through and do the later section. So we've now got this one. Shift select, and now that we're in pose mode already, we can just go straight to this bone. So you'll notice click, shift click, and then click again, and then control and P, bone. So again, I'm just gonna do that for each of the bones with each of the parts of the model. And once you've done that, you've got this set up. So as long as you're in pose mode, notice pose mode at the top. If you're not in pose mode, you can just be in object mode. And if you click on the rig, you come up here and then pose mode or control and tab. And then at this point, if I, let's say, rotate this one, it rotates everything that comes later down the series of bones. And this is what I meant about having the bones in the right direction. Otherwise, this won't work. So let's undo those. Now, if you don't want to do any inverse kinematic rigging, if you just want to keep it like this, I don't know why you would, because inverse kinematics is really cool and it takes no time. I'll show you that in a second. You can constrain your bones here. For example, we're going to talk about constraining this in a second, but it's different for an inverse kinematic rig. And the problem is, is if I came here and let's say rotate it, you'll notice this rotates it in a way that it shouldn't be able to rotate. We don't want that. So if you just click on a bone, you can come down to here where it says bone constraint properties, add constraint, and you can limit the amount it rotates, for example. So here we'd have limit rotation and you can limit what axes it's going to rotate in. Now, if you do choose to do this, which I'm not going to really Really talk you through it's relatively self-explanatory and once we look at the inverse kinematics you'll see exactly what we're doing because it does it in a similar way but if you do do this then notice this limits you on the x y and z but it is for the global x y and z not for the individual bone whereas the inverse kinematics limits the rotation based on the bone itself so that it doesn't get confused i'm going to undo that because we don't want that going on for the inverse kinematics so at the moment, we've got our rigging. We can move things around as we want. So let's get on with the inverse kinematics. The way inverse kinematics works is that it's going to set one bone that is going to control everything else. Effectively, it's like a pointer, and this arm is going to go and try and grab that point. Now, for this, it's very important that we don't just make another bone as part of this armature. If we just brought in another bone here by extruding as we did all the rest, it won't work. What we need to do instead is shift and S, move our cursor to that end point, and then we want to control an A and bring in another bone. And you'll notice it doesn't give us an option there, it automatically brings in a bone. And then I'm gonna select on that and S to scale it up so it's a bit bigger and easier to see and that's gonna be our inverse kinematic bone. So I'm gonna select that bone, F2, and I'm just gonna call this IK bone. Then we need to select our armature, tab, and this is important, you don't go to edit mode, you go into pose mode, and then we're gonna select our IK bone, shift select the bone that is furthest down our rig. So the one that's furthest towards the extremity, press shift and I, 
and then it says add IK and click to active bone. And what that's gonna do now is if I select this and move it around, it moves my whole rig. And at the moment, this isn't particularly exciting because we haven't put any constraints on other bits of movement, but you can see how that's working. So escape to stop that. Now I wanna talk about some bits just to make sure this is really clear. So I wanna click on this bone, and if we come down to this side, the bottom right hand side, you'll notice that we've got this constraint and we've got the constraint here for this IK, so this inverse kinematics. You can do this by selecting it as a bone constraint, go to inverse kinematics and set this all up by clicking on the armature, then clicking on the bone that's gonna be the target. It's just much quicker the way that we just did it. But importantly, it's got this bit that says chain length. Now, chain length tells Blender how many bones to go down in terms of posing. So for example, we've got one bone there, two bones there, three there, four there, and then five there. Now, as long as this is set to zero, it will do this for the entirety of the rig. And we can see that here, if I move that around, everything's being moved. Effectively, zero means everything. But if we had several mechanical arms, not just this one, this means that this could start impacting other sections of the armature that this is connected to. So you don't want that to happen. So if you've got any other armatures connected, what you want to do is set this chain length. For example, this would be to five. And you can see this yellow line that helpfully tells you how far you're going. So two is just up to here, three is up to there. And you'll notice if when three, I do this and start pressing G, it's only affecting those. So it's a really quick way of limiting the movement if you want to. We're gonna come back here and go all the way to five so that we've got that, or because I've got nothing else, we could set it as zero. I'm gonna set it to five because this file is gonna be up for download on the Patreon page. So if you wanna grab it, you can do, and I want this to be rigged in a way that if someone adds this to another object, then you don't have any problems. So I'm changing that to five. So that's us with our inverse kinematics sorted. And as long as we're in pose mode, we can move this around. And you'll notice it can be that the bone goes too far and the arm will stretch out to try and grab it. But we have a problem. This looks great while I'm doing this here, but what doesn't look so good is if I come off of my x-axis view and start moving it around, you can see this starts doing some really weird turns. For example, you'll notice, look, this has gone off center there. This is just turning in a way that doesn't seem to make sense. And you've got this, which is rotated round in a way that we don't want it to, because, well, I want this to be joined to, let's say, a backpack, and that shouldn't be able to move that way. So we're gonna undo that and we're gonna look at how we can make it so that this doesn't pose in a way that should be physically impossible for a machine. Now we do this on a bone by bone basis and again in pose mode. And this is where this gets a little bit strange. Normally, if we want to affect the constraints of a bone, we do this here in the bone constraints. However, when you're doing this for inverse kinematics, which are affecting the whole of the rig, you actually come into the bone properties section. I don't know why, who knows? And here you've got the option to lock certain axes. So you can see that if I just expand this out here. Now, these axes, instead of earlier when I was talking to you about the constraints which are done on a world basis, these are actually done locally for the bone, which means that you are going to need to know which direction the axes are for the bone. And that's quite easy to do. If I come back to my object data properties and I can click this axis button, you now notice that we've got all of the axes and that's even easier to see in X-ray mode where we've got Y, X and Z. And if we come back here, what I can do is work out which directions I want these to be fixed on. So I want this to rotate only in this direction. So effectively looking from the X axis. So what I need to do is lock the Y and the Z. And now that will only rotate as if it was from this viewpoint. Then for our next bone up, which has got this section, which is gonna allow it to rotate this way, I actually want this to be able to rotate only on the Y. So I'm gonna click on my second bone and I'm gonna lock everything other than the Y. Now, all of these other ones, so bone three, two, and one, I want these also only to be able to rotate on the X axis. So that's really quick to set up. And if I just quickly get rid of those annotations, you'll see now that what I can do is I can press G to start moving this around. And you'll notice, oh, no, I just did that one wrong. That was smooth. Let's go back to this bone 
and I've got that so that it's rotating on the Y because I was in Y view. This is where we don't want to cause these problems. So I looked in Y view, but it's not the Y that we want it locked on. We actually want it locked on the Z because we need to use the bone axes not the world one so it's really important we get that right so let's try that again so g and you'll notice now this is rotating the way we want it to and we can have this going grabbing whatever we're trying to get it to grab so again we can have it stretch and we get this nice rotation down there which is the way that we want it to go now the final thing that we want to sort out is well at the moment this is all well and good but it is causing me some problems in that if I go here, instead of rotating the head, it's just got this arm going into the other arm in a way that it shouldn't be able to. So we can see that here. It's gone far too far. I have actually set this up so that you've got these bits indented, so you've got a certain amount of movement that should be allowed, but this is going too far. So this is again another easy thing to solve, and it's all done in this section where we're controlling our inverse kinematics. So if I click on this bone here, it says our X and Y is locked. And that means, and if I just undo the Y, you'll notice that the limit option comes back for the Y. We get rid of the Y and now it's only being able to allow us to limit the X. And that's what we want to do. We want to limit this rotation on the X axis. So if I click that, you'll notice we get this massive red circle showing where it is on the X axis. And you can fiddle around with this and you'll notice it reduces the circle. So you can see that over here. Now we want to actually reduce this one this way so if I bring this back, you'll notice as soon as it gets to this ball, it starts forcing it back and it won't allow it to go any further. So I can now come over here and I can have a look how far should I allow that to go. In fact, there is probably about right. Let's try and move this a little bit more so we can see exactly where we're going. Now, at the moment, that bit is going into this, so we don't want it going quite that far. So let's bring that out to about there. And then we can have a look in the other direction. So I can G and swing this all the way around. And we don't want it going that far. So I can come back and then start working on the minimum. And that's going to force that so that it doesn't cause us a problem there. So I want that to go to a maximum of there. So... This circle is really, really nice in a way of showing this. I think it's a very visually appealing way of fixing this. Now, if at any point we want to move this back to where it was, if we just click on the IK bone and press Alt G, that's going to set it back to its original position. So we don't need to worry about it being in a permanently wrong pose. And we can just start working on each of these and how far we want it to rotate. So I've just completed that with the other bones off camera just to save a little bit of time. At this point, what we can do, and you'll notice each time you click or if you press A, you can see each of those all together, which is really nice. And what we can do is just come in here, press H to hide those bones so we only have the IK bone, and then we can just G to pose that around as much as we want. And then we can just move that around and everything is poseable. So that's how you set up an inverse kinematic rig to be able to move a mechanical arm. If you found that useful, please do click the like button and subscribe and consider having a look at that Patreon if you do want to check out the next bit, which is gonna look at how to add this ring to these pistons and to this cable. Have a great day, guys.